Well, hi there. My name is Kevin Penner, and I am here at the studio of our local access TV, WCG TV, here in Swan River, Manitoba. And we've just purchased a new video switcher, which I'm actually using to record this uh, broadcast. And it's a bit of a switch from the video mixer that we used before. I'll, here, I'll show you a close up. It had uh, eight audio channels, four video channels. We were all standard definition composites with uh, VGA inputs for a computer. Very handy little unit, but we wanted to start doing uh, high definition videos, so we bought this uh, video switcher. It's uh, produced by Blackmagic Design from Australia. It took a few months for it to be available in Canada, but now we have this unit and uh, very handy. It's got eight video inputs. The first four are HDMI. The cameras that we have uh, use that. And then five, six, seven, eight are all SDI inputs. The red light indicates the uh, channel that is actually uh, showing. That's the close-up camera. This was the over shoulder camera, it's on standby. And if we cut, it goes immediately to the other channel. But if I hit auto, it uh, fades. It's a cross fade. One thing you notice is that only two of the channels actually have audio. This is the uh, lapel mic that I'm talking into that's connected to one of the cameras. This is the sound from the laptop, which you heard a minute ago. There is sound coming from the uh, close-up camera. And if I, I turn, turn it on, you can actually hear. You can hear that I'm uh, talking close to it. But it's kind of echoey sound, so we're not playing that. And that's the sound that's coming from the uh, wide-angle camera. But it's also quite echoey, so this no point in uh, recording that right now. Over on this side, we have another number of buttons. This is for the downstream keyer for superimposing graphics. FTB is fade to black. MP1 and MP2 are media players where you can load uh, graphics. And there's the cut and auto buttons. There's your confidence monitor showing that uh, it is indeed working. And there's a jog and shuttle. You can access a whole lot of things through the menu. And over on this end is the HyperDeck Studio Mini. It's a uh, recorder made by the same company. Uh, it's recording right now. You can see the red light is on. There's two slots for um, SD cards. We have a total of 256 gigabytes on the two cards. Good for about seven hours of recording on uh, ProRes LT, which is the codec we're using right now. Again, you can access the menus and there's an, you can use this as for playback as well. And there's a jog shuttle button. Plugged into the mixer is a multi-view monitor. This is the camera that's recording right now. That's why we get the Hall of Images. This would be the uh, camera that is uh, on standby, preview. It's got a green box around it. I don't know if you can see that. And then you have your the other camera views. There is the uh, MacBook, where we were getting the graphics from a minute ago. And right next to it is a second laptop that is got the uh, ATM software control. We have a easier access to the fine controls to adjust all the settings. You notice here the same buttons that are on the front of the panel. One for every uh, video input. There's camera three that's playing this uh, laptop and you can switch using the mouse. There's camera two. There's the other camera. There's the laptop. 
and there's the control software. Some of the buttons are grayed out because this same software is used for some of the larger video switchers that have other uh, features not on this small one. These are transitions. These are the downstream keyers. You also notice that there is a slider which you can activate. Turns out that this is a touch monitor so I can actually move all the controls just by touching the monitor. And then over on this side we have all the changing all the settings. Besides the switcher there's also a complete audio control panel which you can access by hitting the audio button. You can see the sound that's coming from my microphone and you can hear that I'm lowering it, I'm just touching it, and then bringing it back up. If you want to have a motion graphics like a lower third, you can make a video with a green screen background and then overlay it over top. And you can change the background if you want. And Well, there's a lot more that I need to learn about this whole setup, but I have figured out how to do the green screen, and so let me demonstrate that. Cue the fireworks. Yahoo! <laughs> now, uh, this uh, chroma key could do a little bit of adjusting. You can see there's some uh, green light showing in my hair, but uh, I think it's pretty... Not too many transparent spots showing through my shirt. I didn't change my shirt, I was wearing green before. Oh yeah, so uh, I think it's gonna be a very useful, it's gonna be a very useful uh, video switcher for live shows. We're gonna have to really know what we're doing, but uh, practice makes perfect. So uh, that's all for now, and I will be making some more videos once I've figured out how to use the downstream keyers. I haven't quite figured out how to use that yet.